Go ahead. Hi, are we Facebook Live? Yeah, we are. Okay. So we're live. Fun. Okay. Hey, it's uh, Heather and Amy. We're back <laughs> for more conversations, ever so clever conversations with Amy and Heather. We We've taken a little back. break, but here we are back and we are on episode 24, right? That's yes. wow. <laughs> right. And we're looking today at anxiety and the new year. How are we really? addressing that feeling the anxiety with the start of the new year. We're kind of into the year a little bit. So it's not like it's just starting out, but that's what we want to talk about. So I think I'm going to dive in if it's okay, Heather, and yeah, maybe ahead. we need to talk about too. If you have comments, please post them in the comment field on Facebook. Right. And also um, the yeah, reason Heather and I started these call or these conversations is we were having these conversations on the phone and I, I thought, boy, I think we both did. We need to have these conversations because other people need to hear what empathic, highly sensitive, intuitive people are thinking so that they feel not so alone because those personality types tend to, you know, stay to themselves. And so we're just simply, um, you know, we're not experts, but we are experienced in this and want to bring that to you because it's a turbulent time in our world. And we want to make sure that you understand you're not alone. <laughs> there are other people like you and it's okay. That is for sure. And we like the deeper conversations, many of us that are highly sensitive, intuitive empaths. So that's Absolutely. what we're showing as well. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So let's dive into the energy. That's kind of my sweet spot is to read the energy patterns from month to month, week to week, day to day. And this year is about I don't love this word, but personalization, we could also say sovereignty, we're coming into our own power into our own understanding through choice, and limiting the exposure to the egoic motion we might make forward in our life and instead, moving toward that space of power independent of other people. So we're not necessarily this year going to look outside of ourselves for information. I might not ask Heather for her feedback. I might say, just do it the way I'm going to do it and get some feedback naturally through natural consequence, which would be a more divine way for me to operate for all of us to operate. So I want you to think about that this year about coming back to yourself. Mm. I have a kid who's practicing, right now, <laughs> practicing the trumpet. So I'm not playing music in the background. <laughs> I said, Heather, can you hear this? And I said, at least he's good at it, <laughs> but it's class for band. Um, so be aware of the energy. The energy is going to change month to month, of course. And in the month of February, what we're really looking at just to set the stage for you is a very internal month. And the months that are the odd months of the year until July are going to show up as, as external. We're going to be watching the world from watching the world platform. Things will be happening in the world platform or the, the nation we live in or the state or city. But we're going to watch it from an inward view of looking out and addressing how do I feel about that instead of taking in information from other people and getting that getting you going to a certain place that maybe you didn't even want to go in the first place. But this month is truly about dropping control and complaining and giving advice, which is if you look at that control is one side of the pie. The other side of the pie would be enabling, which is giving advice. I'm going to fix you because you're broken. That comes from codependency. And then this other piece of complaining, which, you know, we could say that could be a third piece. So it's this equally balanced portion um, where complaining is going to yield nothing. It's just going to infuse our ego with more power. And unfortunately, in this energy, because we're getting close to ourselves, that's going to derail us and get us off track, especially to those more important things in our life, like our purpose and being honest. The purpose inside of us is so subtle we can become afraid of it because it's so easy for us. We overlook it. We think that's too easy for me. I shouldn't do that for a living. I should do something that challenges me. And that's where we want this subtlety to, to be available so that we really start clinching. Maybe that's not an appropriate word, but realizing and actu actu making it actually happen, that purpose inside, because that's, my friends, what really brings happiness, that meaning. Mm -hmm. So you know, that's what we're looking at this year. And we will see a lot of shift during this year. It may be an uncomfortable year only because we're learning how to drop all of that old stuff. So it's a year where we can take away anxiety. We can take away depression. We can take away the heaviness and burden. If I were to say, this is kind of a very primal year for people who are intuitive, empathic, and highly sensitive, and it may be not rigorous for us, but hard to watch, hard to stomach because we're coming into our power because the paradigm or the shift or however you want to say it is shifting more toward our nature 
and what we've been disgruntled about inside and had turmoil about for so many years, which was to me disconnection and, and the lack of allowing our knowing to shine forward. So that's just a little whip share about, you know, there's a million things that could be said about the energy this year, but I think that hopefully concisely says it for people who fall into these categories of attributes. Yeah, I love what you said about being sovereign and, you know, being more listening to your inward and listening to your own guidance and yourself. I think anxiety often for me can be searching out um, justification from others or, um, you know, asking questions and wanting to get that, like I said, justification, but like seeing people saying, yeah, you're on the right direction. Even though I know I am, it's like, I want that confirmation that I am from others. And really it shouldn't matter. It's really inward and who, you know, you're getting it. You're receiving the right direction and information from divine, whoever, you know, God, spirit. Um, and I think that can cause anxiety because you're not connected to yourself that way. So you're searching in, uh, you know, searching for that justification and they might tell you something else and then it doesn't feel in alignment. And so that's causing that, um, anxiety or unease when you really know it truly in yourself. I agree, Heather. I think that takes me to a different place. I wasn't sure I'd talk about today, but let's go there. I'm having this inner wrestle. I'm reading some books about the ego, which is something I don't normally do. So it's very much in my face, different interpretations of what that is and how it behaves and so on. And as a result, what is suggested is the antidote to the ego is is how I behave right mm -hmm. and so then I have the ego over here but what's happened for me is I feel stuck in the middle of not I can I know how to behave mm -hmm. but I'm not it's actually not necessarily aligned to who I am like an example would be sometimes I haven't spoken up because I knew that the person who was treating me badly even in a group of people if I said to them please stop that's not okay I would have been told by the other people be nice to that person yeah and and those are ways that are contrary to who i am that i wasn't heard about saying this isn't working for me and you need to stop everybody else would have said you don't know this person you need to not <laughs> so that that changed so i get caught in this confusion about or that's where i am now i'll say is how am i speaking up and getting what i need mm -hmm. and being able to hold that spot where lacking the ego, I can actually feel good. Mm -hmm. I can feel this sense of, I stood up, I used my power. Mm -hmm. It commanded some sort of result that was a necessary piece for me to feel safe. Yeah. And then it, but it was free of ego. Yeah. And I think that that's, that's been where I'm at is like, how do you, and I feel in the middle, which to me is where the power is, but I'm not feeling that sense of, aha, I get it. And even if I see somebody else who doesn't get it, I don't judge them because I'm free of you. I'm, I say that's, that's okay. But I'm still caught up and I think, where is that? Because I know, but I, <laughs> I can't feel. So well, I, think I think some of it goes to acceptance and worthiness of, you know, when you truly accept all pieces of you, Mm -hmm. could be yeah you're not I think you're able to speak up and not care or be worried about what others are going to say but that's a that's a challenging and that's a really hard place to get to um because then it's like the worry of not showing who you truly are to anybody and well, to I, be in a space of judgment right so that's that's hard for a lot of us that are um sensitive empathic intuitive because We've had a lot of experiences where we were judged. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so that's kind of, you know, if you feel in that space, it could be energetic that we're drawn there to feel yeah. like, how do we break free of that? How does that true power arrive or so that the feelings come with it where it's like, that's okay. If you don't like that, that's okay. But yeah, I could tell right. it didn't feel that way at all. You know, that was yeah. an old scenario, but yeah. And I think it's hard for us to see people not being okay with us. I agree. Right. We, well, so that's a part yeah. of it. Too. And we feel it. Like you say, we feel that energy of them, of the judgment from them. We can feel that. Right. Well, so, yeah. 
absolutely. I just, I just did my Enneagram, which I had never done before. And my, I have a number that signifies my main hurt in my life would be rejection, which it was. Uh, so yeah. I, that is a big that one for me, sense. for sure. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 So this February, I think for me, and I know whoever's watching how you're feeling this month or those watching us later, how you're feeling now in February, if it's been different than January, I know January, we had so much going on here in the United States. Um, and anyone watching us was probably feeling it as well of what was happening. Um, I was feeling a lot of anxiety during that time. And now I feel more at peace and a peaceful state. Um, so um, that, sh that has shifted for me. I didn't expect for 2021 to automatically, we got in the new year and like everything would be better, you know? Um, so I wasn't expecting that to be how the new year would be. I knew it was, it's going to be a, a slow transition for sure. Yeah, I agree. I felt that I was read it. Like I had this reticence inside about the new year mm. and, and then, you know, what came seemed to be okay that's merits probably how a lot of us felt and then we move through but I think a lot of this year we'll be moving through and yeah. observing and seeing what do we are we going to stand up do we need to you know all of the pieces of that and realizing you know I think with anxiety because that's what we're talking about today mm -hmm. which I define it as the attachment to outcome so how can you detach from that and a lot of what we're learning this year is about surrender which is is really that ultimate um, space of um, letting go and trusting. So it's an active space. It's not a, I surrender, you you have control over me now. Okay. It's I surrender and my power is here. So you can't touch me, but I know my, you know, like I can accept my journey of what may be ahead. So um, it's dying nobly at the extreme, you know? <laughs> right? Because you know, it's okay. And that's a very different mindset. It gives us a lot of peace. And so we're dealing with that. I think we can look at that in conjunction with anxiety of not getting trapped up about all the things we see, but instead surrendering and saying, I'm okay now. I'm, you know, look at the big picture would, is what Elaine Aaron would say to keep our heads right. around it. Yeah. And when I think of anxiety, one thing I think of, and I, I talk about this is just not being connected with your soul or who your true, true self is or being grounded in your truth. Um, so that I think is anxiety as well, because you're not knowing, um, what your true belie beliefs are, your true, who you are meant to be your soul, why you're here. So that will create anxiety as well. So I feel like there's that, um, way of looking at it too, which makes, I mean, they seem similar. So I think with, I was noticing Ellie one day, she said, I feel anxious. My daughter who's 20, who has anxiety has been diagnosed with it um, in her childhood. We were in the car and she said, I feel very anxious and I don't know why, cause I don't have any reason. And then I talked to her about be present in the moment right now, because she's so out here, you know, and thinking um, and processing. And she's always a step ahead of what is happening. So it's like, be right here, right now. What do you see? What do you feel? What do you smell? Like, just be here. Even as a child, we were at Disney World, you know, like the happiest place on the earth. And she was like, what are we doing next? Where are we going? And I'm like, just be right here. Like she could, she still struggles to just be. And I think that's part of anxiety, right? You're looking future and you're not connecting into who you, who you are in this moment, what you're doing. Um, and that's what I see a lot of people. It's like, you just got to get grounded in where you are. Your sovereign being too. Like, what are you doing? What do you need? Listen inward, not to the outside. Yeah. yeah. So I'd love to know comments too on people. What are they feeling now with February or if January was challenging? I'm kind of looking at my phone for any comments. Um, we would love to have these conversations include you um, with comments because we can't see you um, and it, it was, you know, support you if we can as well. So whatever is happening with you, if you're feeling anxious, you have a child that's feeling anxious. Um, do you have tips we could 
Well, you know, I can share a story that I think is kind of interesting, but sure. I'm like your daughter. I've always stayed out of my body, way into my head, way out, out of my body. And yeah. so I just had surgery on my foot and it was a necessary, you know, thing to, to keep me pain-free. And um, what I've realized is when there's pain in my foot, I'm tensing up my hip to protect my foot and some, you know, cause it hurts to set it down. And immediately I realized I have to change my thinking about this experience with my foot healing and look at it as something else. And I realized quite quickly, it's a journey. It's not a story about me. It's a journey that I'm experiencing. And it seemed to shift some of my intensity about it, but the experience has not been super painful, but it's been intense, which is strange. So then um, I've realized when there's pain in my foot, I can simply bring myself back into my body and my foot will calm down. So it's like telling me constantly over these days, you gotta get into your foot you got to come back down into your body and be inside. And it's kind of like a little training ground. And that's the journey, right? That's the what is, what is this about? That's what it's about. <laughs> so, so we can look at things in our lives, even though that's not a pleasant thing that I had to have done as not, you know, what's the opportunity in it, but more, what is really going on here? What is this teaching me? But it sort of came together slowly and naturally. And once I got informed inside, I realized this is quite powerful. I can change the pain, you know, and also manifest and do it. I, I mean, this is kind of weird, but you guys are all with me. <laughs> Last night when I went to bed, I've been saying, I've been having nerve pain. And I said, it's feeling better and better and better and better and better for a lot of the evening in my head. And when I was sleeping, I woke up and it felt like something celestial was massaging my foot. It was really wild. <laughs> it felt really different than a human massaging your foot because it felt almost like it was inside my foot. Um, felt amazing. My foot, I had great range of motion. I felt amazing. And I thought, this is incredible. I don't know that I would have felt yes, that 10 years ago. That is beautiful. It is right? really, I'm now that I'm saying it, my foot is freeing up. It's like ah. you're so able to manifest in ways I don't, I've never seen. And I'm, I've played around with that a lot just because mm -hmm. of what I do. <laughs> yeah, right. So it's powerful. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Cause I think it's important for people to hear that what we do and you do, because if they're doing it or want to ask for it, it's, it's right. okay. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do I anything? don't have much more to say, Heather. I think, you know, with kids that are anxious, mm -hmm. um, listening to them, but also allowing them to hurdle their own challenges so that they can figure out it's not so scary and they learn slowly mm -hmm. to recognize the world is safe and that they, um, they, you know, for one, they know, I mean, I don't track my kids on their cell phone or anything, but, and I also don't have kids that are way out there in the world, but I think that I know they know inside and I, I've taught them to trust that. And I think that's the benefit of your highly sensitive, empathic and intuitive children is you can teach them to be in touch. If you're someplace and you know, it's time to go, you need to honor that, mm -hmm. you know, and get up and leave or do your thing. And without drama, you need to teach them in a way that's drama free, but, um, and then teaching them to do those things that are maybe make them afraid, you know, because it's the world feels overwhelming and rightfully so to people like us, because we take in so much of the sensory perception of everything happening. Yeah. Well, and well, my I son, I'm oh, sorry, it sounded funny. Um, my son who's um, 14, he will get anxious about certain things at school and he's more of a highly sensitive person than an empath. But lately too, I turn it on to him. I'll listen and then I'll say, well, how do you think you can handle that? Or, you know, how do you think, you know, or what do you think you could learn from that? And so turning it more to him with my daughter, I went where I try to fix everything. So I've learned some tools, um, but I think that's it. It's like, you can't fix it. You can't it's just being there for them and listening and le letting them know you're there because he'll come and talk and explain it and talk through it. And then I'll just respond in that way in that short statement and then he'll walk away and feel better. Mm -hmm. So it is, I mean, the most important, I think is just being present and hearing them and letting them know that you're there for them. Um, and like with Ellie, I have to stop her and remind her to be present and what we do is we go through the five senses sometimes and that like stops her mind from thinking. It'll be like, what do you smell? 
you know, what are you seeing right now? No matter where you are, what are you feeling? You know, so I go through that with her and she's like, oh yeah, now I feel better because it just stopped her thoughts right. from racing through her head. Um, so I think those are a few, few tips that you could probably use with your children. Mm -hmm. um, and coming up, we're going to have, Amy is going to be one of our, Amy is one of our experts for Empath Mama and she's teaching a workshop coming up here on February 18th. Yeah. It's a free workshop. Um, what did we title it? Amy, do you remember? Um, you know, it's about I, kind of identifying your highly sensitive child and what they really need. You yeah. know, meaning they have a need that's really specific. That's what I say is, high, you know, what the highly sensitive child needs, everybody can need and, and thrive from. But what, what everybody needs isn't what the highly sensitive needs. So it's that specific need that is really important to them. And it's on, it's at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on the 18th of February. Mm -hmm. Right. And we'll have a link in here. I believe Amy has that set up. So we would love to have you join there. Um, we're gonna also have more experts coming that will be free workshops that Empath Mama will be sharing with you. Um, but Amy has some stuff coming and how you can find her as well. Yeah, so there's a link there as well for an event that is also a free event on the 11th of February. And it's all around love. I actually called it the Lonely Hearts club event <laughs> and the reason I call it that is some of us can feel lonely within a long-term relationship no relationship or on and off or any any form of a relationship and we're going to take a look at the energy for the year I've set it up kind of aligned to how I run my wisdom gathering so there's some time for introspection but we'll be really I'll be doing an intuitive reading for the group that convenes about what the energy will look for, like for 2021 there's a great opportunity this year because of the sovereignty for us to change the shape and form of how we show up and how we be, how we are in our love relationships. So that's the power. And that's why I'm bringing it up. And that is 7 PM central standard time as well. So sign up because it is free and um, there are a ton of people coming. <laughs> so get your awesome. Yeah, yeah. Join in. <laughs> um, okay. I'm excited. I think it'll be really fun. And it, it really is for anybody. I mean, you could be in a long-term love relationship and everything is fine. But I think it'll be interesting to see how are things changing. I just think a lot of people are lonely and I'm going to actually ask, ask specific questions around those pieces to give you the edge on how to, how to address that for yourself this year. Oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah, because that is true. Even if you are married or in a relationship, you can feel lonely. Yep. Yeah. All right, well, and next week, so every Tuesday we'll be coming in here with conversations with the two of us, Amy and Heather, um, uh, at 12 noon central time. So next week we have our 25th episode, which is why daily routines are important for the empath and highly sensitive person. So I hope you'll join us next week and we'll see you then. Thanks everyone. All right, take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.